truth about the war on terror friends as an indian who grew up in punjab during the height of militancy i've seen it all and i've heard it all in fact we indians always had some issues uh, with terrorism thanks to our problems with pakistan and its uh, over powerful and overbearing agency interservices intelligence which promoted terrorism as a state policy against india we had troubles in punjab in 80s and since 90s we are having trouble in kashmir but what about the rest of the world you people didn't even knew what terrorism actually was until it started around uh, early to mid 90s i would say but the question is why did the terrorism start before we get on to the next question that what's the truth about the war on terror let me rewind the time back to the 1990 time when the first gulf war was fought now why that war was uh, fought i'll discuss that in my next video but what i want to talk about right now is that that is the war that changed the course of history of the rest of the entire world now in that war america and its allies won that war fair and square simply because iraq wasn't powerful enough to have resisted resisted them for long but in that war some innocent lives were lost and there were people who felt humiliated by that by that attack on their sovereignty and they are the ones who initially supported and started terrorism but as terrorism spread and terrorists killed innocent people the family members and friends kith and kin of those who died in terrorist attacks they wanted blood for blood and they wanted revenge now thing is all this war that's going on that's just an act of revenge terrorists want revenge for what america and its allies are doing to their people and them while the people who are being killed world over in terrorist attacks their family members want revenge from terrorists for killing their near and dear ones hatred is leading to more hatred and we are not finding an end but what actually is the truth of this war the truth is guys we ordinary people men and women we are just cannon fodder for both the sides fighting the war now who's fighting the war it's not the people of america who's fighting the war and it's definitely not the people of european countries or the people of afghanistan or iraq who are fighting this war there are only two sides to this war one is the terrorist and the other is the shrewd businessman the lobbies the gun lobby the oil lobby and the construction lobby the three lobbies which supports political parties with funds in elections every time there's an election anywhere in the world they are the ones who are fighting this war friends the richest person on this earth is not what the forbes magazine or any other magazine will have us believe the richest men of this world they are never even mentioned in this list simply because if they are mentioned it will expose their whole game you may go to the remotest part of this world you may not find a laptop or a computer or a mobile but you will definitely find a gun and every soldier may have one laptop and one mobile but he carries at least three guns and a numerous other amount of ammunition grenades rockets etc etc you will lose count counting the type of ammunition so soldiers are carrying and it's not just the ammunition they have to buy protective equipment and it's not just the soldiers who have these things that terrorists have the same as well and the truth is guys i can buy a laptop in market for less than 300 dollars while the simplest of sports gun a point to do mm caliber pistol it costs nearly 700 dollars and the simplest of weapons for self defense a point to do mm revolver it costs a minimum $2000 and unlike computers and mobiles these things they require constant flow of money i'll tell you how 
the laptop that I'm using right now to record this video. I've had that laptop with me for the last four years and ever since I bought it, I haven't spent even a single dollar on it. I've got my m mobile for two years with me now and I haven't spent any money on it. The personal computer my parents used to chat with me, I bought that in 2003 and I haven't spent any money on it. The truth is be that these are the things which we buy once we don't have to spend money. But with guns, every time you fire a bullet or you use a grenade, you have to replace it with a new one. So the people who are making the most money are the gun lobbyists. And they are the ones who don't want this war to end. When the then USSR invaded Afghanistan, it was the American gun lobbies which provided weapons to the same Taliban to fight the Russians. And now, when America and its allies, they are fighting the terrorists, I'm sure there are some gun lobbies around the world which are making money by selling guns to terrorists. It's the same story. During Vietnam War, America's, uh, American gun lobbies uh, provided weapons to one side, Russian gun lobbies provided weapons to the other side. Same thing happened in the uh, Korean Peninsula conflict. And it's the same story everywhere around the world. It's innocent people like you and me, ordinary men and women like you and me who are killed in terrorist attacks as well as who die in crossfire between the two warring sides. But the gun lobbies, they always make money out of it. The bullet that kills an ordinary man that provided money to the one who manufactured that bullet. And they are the people who never die in any terrorist attack and they never will. Because they know when what terrorist attack is going to happen where. Because all this war is their making. They don't want peace. Otherwise, we are not living in dark ages. We are not living in medieval times. We are living in a free democratic world where everyone wants peace. But we still don't get peace because these big businessmen, they don't want peace to happen. Because if there was peace in this world, how will the gun manufacturers get money? Once the war is over, doesn't matter which side has won. The construction lobby makes all the money because they get contracts for reconstructing hospitals, schools and all, all of the kinds of infrastructure. The companies which manufacture bricks, cement, etc, etc, they are the one who get all the money. And they don't want war to end. If there, there's peace everywhere around the world, they will not make their money. We are being used as scapegoats, as cannon fodder, so that they can make their bank balances fatter and fatter. And that's the whole truth about the war on, war on terror. I will explain it a bit more in detail in my subsequent videos and you'll know what I'm talking about. I'll leave it here for the moment.